morning, Sioux Trail Panthers. My name is Mrs. Freeman, and I brought one of my very favorite books from my childhood to read to you today. The title of my book is How Fletcher Was Hatched. How Fletcher Was Hatched by Wendy and Harry Devlin. Alexandra sat in the sunlight watching a chick hatch from an egg. Peep! And it was out of its shell. Fletcher, she called to her dog. Look at this dear chick. It's so tiny. It's so yellow. It's so fluffy. It's so stupid, growled Fletcher to himself. He gave Alexandra a hopeless look and walked to his water dish. It was empty. Another thing, he hadn't had his ears scratched in days. No one wants a first-rate hound dog around here, he thought to himself. She's forgotten me. Fletcher raised his head and howled miserably. Quiet, noisy. The chicks are sleeping. Alexandra turned her back on Fletcher. With a wounded look, Fletcher shuffled mournfully away toward the park at the edge of town. At the far end of the park was a pond where Fletcher's faithful friends Beaver and Otter lived. Otter was splashing Beaver at the water's edge when Fletcher shuffled up. The animals weren't long in noticing Fletcher's sadness. Fletcher saw to that with a few deep moans and some very loud <sniffs> sniffles. Alarmed, they gathered close to hear his tale. She's forgotten me, said Fletcher. She loves chickens. Cute, fluffy, peeping, stupid chickens. Beaver and Otter, who were wild, free animals, didn't really understand Fletcher's deep attachment to his mistress. But they understood that Fletcher was terribly unhappy. I'm terribly unhappy, said Fletcher. Maybe if you were fluffy and yellow, Otter said doubtfully. Could you peep, peep? A little? asked Beaver. If only you could hatch once in a while, said Otter. That's it, cried Beaver, slapping his tail. We'll have you hatch. It will be a new beginning. Me? Hatch? yelped Fletcher. But Beaver and Otter paid little attention to Fletcher. They were soon in a warm discussion of how to make an egg large enough to hold a hound dog. With some misgivings, Fletcher promised to do his part and act like a chicken. They built the egg around Fletcher. All day they worked in the sun with reeds, clay, and river grasses. Otter sometimes stopped to tickle Fletcher's nose with a cornflower, but Beaver, who was a master builder, worked steadily, plastering pink clay evenly over a reed network. With his friends working so tirelessly, Fletcher couldn't complain, even when wet lumps of clay dropped on his head. At last it was finished. Beaver had smoothed the clay over the surface with such artistry there could be little doubt that this great, pink, pearly object was an egg, an egg that would have been a joy to any mother bird's heart. He speckled it brown in honor of Fletcher's own brown spots. Two small holes were left in the egg so that Fletcher could be fed water and a strawberry or two. Beaver, Otter, and Fletcher were tired. It had been a long day's work. Shadows grew deep and lengthened into the blue of the night. When the pumpkin-colored moon appeared on the rim of the pond, beaver, otter, nestling close to their great egg, lay in a deep sleep. Inside the egg, Fletcher was feeling very homesick. Fletcher wondered if Alexandra was thinking of him, too. Back in the farmhouse, Alexandra lay awake under her red quilt. Tears fell on her pillow. How could she sleep with Fletcher gone, perhaps never to return? The clock struck 12 before she finally went off to sleep. At last it was morning. At the pond, the white surface of the water was broken by jumping frogs and leaping minnows. Otter and Beaver awoke and ambled down to the water's edge for a quick dip and breakfast. They didn't forget a few strawberries for Fletcher, who was discovering that the inside of an egg is a most unsatisfactory place to yawn and stretch. Let's go, commanded Beaver. Now the animals started the last part of their plan. Very carefully, they pushed, shoved, and rolled the egg until they reached a large clump of grass by the path that led to Alexandra's school. Inside the egg, Fletcher felt a bit bruised and very confused. 
The town began to wake up slowly, and the sounds of traffic drove Beaver and Otter back to the pond and the tall grasses. They shouted, goodbye, good luck, Fletcher, and remember, no barking, just peeping. Peep, growled Fletcher, and then lay quiet. It was the custodian on his way to open the school who first discovered the amazing egg. He shouted to some nearby children, it's an egg, the biggest one in the world. Call the science teacher. Soon a crowd of children gathered about. Their eyes were filled with wonder. Where's its mother? asked little Tommy. Its mother would be as large as a house, said round-eyed Gabby, shaking her blonde hair. Bigger, said Robert. The science teacher scurried up to the crowd with his friend Professor Schnitzer from the university. The crowd became larger, and members of the school band on their way for an early practice gathered close. The science teacher stood up on a park bench and shouted, Don't touch it! It looks like a flat-billed prehistoric snatchafratch, a priceless find. A respectful hush fell on the crowd. Or perhaps it is the web-footed pickle-faced dinoflyer, cried Professor from the university. Fletcher huddled inside the egg, quivering with excitement as he waited for Alexandra. Suddenly he heard her name. The children were telling her about the egg. Fletcher now began to get ready for the big moment, but Alexandra was making funny noises. Alexandra was crying. She told them all that she didn't want to see a stupid old egg. She was looking for lost Fletcher. In fact, the only thing in the world she wanted was Fletcher. Then and there, Fletcher knew it was time to hatch. He pushed and stretched, and with a rising howl, he fairly exploded out of the egg. The crowd screamed and moved back. Fletcher shook himself, and the mud flew. Feeling that something was expected of him, he turned to Alexandra. Peep, he croaked. Laughing and crying, Alexandra hugged him. The two men of science looked at their shoes and felt a little foolish. Strike up the band, said the principal, hoping everyone had forgotten about his guess, that the mother of the egg was a giant hen from Mars. The band played hooray for the red, white, and blue. The principal, feeling called upon to bring the occasion to a close, faced the audience. He wiped his face and with a handkerchief he said, only in America could a hound dog hatch. This seemed to please everyone. With much clapping and whistling, the crowd began to fall away. Alexandra skipped along with Fletcher. Fletcher panted happily. Sometimes Alexandra had to stop to hug her dog. And Fletcher thought to himself, you don't have to hatch to be loved. You don't have to be yellow and peep. You can be a great hound dog with brown spots and be the most important creature in a little girl's life. He gave himself a good shake and the last bit of dried mud on his back went flying. The end. I hope you enjoyed my story. This book is a story from my childhood and it's 50 years old. Thanks for letting me share it with you. Oh, 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 oh,